Welcome to this briefing for the 2024 ULI Hind student competition here in Asia Pacific run by the ULI. Um, we're very excited to be running the second of our, our, um, our competitions in the region and build on the success of this great initiative that um, has begun in the United States. Today, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the competition and outline how it runs and brief you on the competition, the time frame. but I'll also give you a little bit of background to ULI and the context um, of this competition in terms of the mission and goals of the Urban Land Institute. So um, we'll have a chat room going and we'll also have um, some Q&A at the end if you'd like to ask any further questions or get clarification. Um, I'll talk to you um, a little bit about the outline of the competition, the timeframe, key dates, um, and also ULI. So the ULI is a global organization of property professionals. It is unique in that it is a multidisciplinary organization that focuses, it brings together finance, um, planning, uh, city and municipal issues and architecture development, et cetera, all together into one group to share their interests about um, urban development across the globe. Our commitments are to connect our members through a global network of shared stories. And we build that very honestly. It's not political. We're not into advocacy. We're not into government advocacy, but we're into best um, sharing best practices that can be um, uh, learned from all of the participants in the Urban Land Institute um, network, as well as in the property industry more, more um, globally. We also then draw on the expertise of our membership to um, come together to focus on specific issues, um, sharing that global experience and their willingness to engage with um, partners, with professionals or with cities. And we come together and do work in those communities specifically to help those local communities um, address challenges that may be particular to them could be shared from others' experience globally. Um, our mission priorities are about decarbonisation um, and progressing to net zero across the globe. That is absolutely fundamental in the property industry and that's a key ULI um, mission. We're also trying to bring forums together to address um, housing accessibility um, across the globe, how the access to housing, um, not just housing ownership, but housing generally is a, is a global issue. And we, we, we see that in varying um, uh, forms across all the geographies in which we are um, engaged and which are, and where our members are located. And then we also have a priority to to do things and run programs to educate the next generation, to share those stories, to mentor, and to give opportunities for the next generation of real estate leaders um, to learn and experience um, things that ULI is interested in. Um, and we do that right across the group, and this competition is part of that that drive. <coughs> Excuse me. The um, the ULI today is close to fifty thousand members in like eighty countries. There are many, many hours. It's an organization that I say to my colleagues and peers that you get out of the ULI what you put in. Um, we have a lot of panels. We have a lot of programs. We have a lot of forums that people can contribute to and share and attend. And it's the hours and time that you put into that and give back that makes ULI unique. Um, on the services that I was talking about before, we have advisory panels where we come into to cities or, or particular projects and bring out um, our, our senior members, give their time to charrette and explore solutions in um, an advisory sense. And we've been doing that since 1947. And then we brought in a smaller version of that called technical assistance panels. And so they've been very popular as well. And then we have a, a, a global program about urban development, understanding the complexities of urban development, the intricacies of local engagement, um, local planning rules, um, the shared mixed use impact of community um, space in a development versus revenue producing development. And we wrap that up in a program called Urban Plan. And if you get an opportunity for to set an urban plan, please put your hand up and have a go at that because it's a great program. 
Our membership today, as I said, is very diverse. We have um, government members, we've got architects, we've got a lot of developers, probably strongest in developers, but they come together as probably developers come from all of the streams in these other part of this of this um, this graph here. We've got legal people, we've got consultants, urban planners, financiers, et cetera. So it is quite diverse and that's what our membership enjoys because they do get to network with their direct um, sector peers, but they also get to learn perspectives and interact with um, professionals across the whole spectrum of urban development. And we when we do that now in Asia Pac, we're about 3000 members. So we've been growing over the last 10 years. We have local councils across uh, Australia, China, Hong Kong, India, Japan, the Philippines, Singapore, and Korea. And we're moving into Vietnam and, Indone and Indonesia, which is great. Um, we also have product councils. Product councils would are sector specific. So we have product councils in industrial real estate. We have product councils in, in retail. Um, we have product councils purely in residential. So they're they're where our members want to come to come together where our general forums across discipline our product councils are sector specific we also act, act um, are active as in a, in a women's group women's leadership initiative which is really strong um, in uli and we also have a young leaders group the wild g which are our members um, up to 35 years old so that's our that's our um, organization that's the uli the ULI competition itself is reflective of that, but appealing to what well, is aimed at um, connecting with young graduate students, or early professionals or current senior year students um, to really come together and challenge themselves to think about a real life problem on a real life site and explore how the multi disciplines of urban development can impact on that on that particular site. It's been running for over 20 years now in America. Um, over that time, 2,000 teams have participated. So that's what's that? That's about 100 um, teams per year on average, but it was smaller in the latter years and quite large, um, slightly dropped off with COVID. Um, it was the result of uh, a philanthropic philanthropic donation by Gerald Hines, who is a wonderful man, Hines Real Estate Organization in America. And he had a vision to bring together youth together and has made this very generous endowment, which continues to fund the ULI prize in America. Um, and also that organization has now extended that um, sponsorship of this competition in Europe and now in Asia Pac. As I said before, um, it's our second year now and really excited about the benefits we had last year, our learnings last year, the engagement from those that participated. And we look forward to, to this year's competition with more excitement. So the competition of itself is, um, at, is aimed at final year undergraduate and recent graduate students. Predominantly, um, we are a little bit flexible as you make up your teams because we really want these teams to be multidisciplinary teams and more of those multidisciplinary networks come together in first year out rather than in, in our colleges. In America, the the real estate um, courses are more multidisciplinary and this, this has grown from that American model. We ask the teams to um, challenge themselves and propose innovative solutions um, for a particular block of land that will advise you at competition launch. The teams are from three to five students in at least two different disciplines in real estate. The competition runs over three weeks and you're asked to devise a development program or vision and story for a site in a major city in, in Asia Pacific. Um, you need to articulate the outline of your proposal. There are graphics involved. It's not a design competition per se, but design is a key part of it. Um, urban planning is a key part of it. Diversity of mix and components and the financial data required and the feasibility of the project is also a measure of success for this competition. It is, isn't, however, an ideas competition and is assessed as such, as such. There are planning considerations and constraints that we'll put on you in the brief, but you, um, you can interpret those as best you feel appropriate for that site. If you, do, if you do breach those competition guidelines, you need to have a very strong argument why and need to validate why you're doing so with rational 
and reality perspective, even though it is an ideas competition. And with an ideas competition, it's no expectation that anyone will apply this submitted scheme to a site. It's not a real life project, but it is um, an ideas competition on a real site in a major city. So that's really the outline of the competition. Um, key things there are the three to five members. You need to be supported by a sponsoring university. Your, in, your registration form will require sign-off by that university. You have a sponsor from that university. You can also have a professional sponsor nominated in your entry where they give you guidance and, and support you in shaping your entry. They, you must have at least two different disciplines in real estate as a makeup of your team. Um, we have final year undergraduates and graduate students that will be assessed and, 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 and um, endorsed by the university. Although we have got been given some flexibility, we do consider that and some flexibility as the competition is, is developing in Asia Pacific to ensure maximum um, entries are obtained. The competition runs as a one stage submission. In the, in the US, it's a two stage submission where they do a preliminary submission and then do a, the finalists do a much more advanced one. We have only one stage submission because it tries to fit in with the calendar here in our educational calendar, and it's only one stage. Those who are finalists are asked to clarify and respond to some questions, but aren't asked to do any further enhancement of their, um, their submission, rather put it in a compelling presentation that will be done online to our competition jury. So the detail of the competition is, and just a little bit more, um, it reflects reality. So there are very, there are very clear um, planning rules or constraints. They will be included in the competition brief. We don't expect competitors from Korea to know the planning. If the site was in Hong Kong, we don't expect the Koreans to know the planning rules of Hong Kong. What information you do need will be included in the competition brief. We'll advise of other things like adjacent infrastructure and site factors that will impact and support the viability, the pitch, the appeal, the marketability of the, of, of the development on that selected site. Um, in the competition, you are assuming the role of master developer um, reporting back to an investment group. The investment group has identified a block of land. You need to come up as the master developer with a proposal to that investor to say, come and invest in this, this is what the project looked like. Here is my vision and the proposal to transfer this site into a mixed use transit oriented neighborhood. And your proposal must outline the commercial benefits, the community benefits, the statutory benefits that it has, as well as the financial returns to ensure that this one comprehensive development of the site, the proposal um, demonstrates local um, and regional positive economic impact. It enhances and reflects the sustainability and resilience of the neighbourhood. It considers issues around equity and housing diversity, and it has a broader vision that lifts that particular neighbourhood and area um, above its parent state and a positive influence to how that's, that area may develop and become more attractive and sustainable over time. The submission requirements um, are quite specific. We ask you to look at planning context and analysis of, of key issues that influence and, 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 and shape your proposal. Things such as current land use, adjacent land work, transport networks, the environment, the green space, the water, the sustainability, et cetera. All of those come in and, and they form the context and analysis that, it, that shape your proposal. You need to illustrate your proposal on a site plan, the land and building uses, how the street networks work, this public infrastructure, um, concepts around landscape and public open space. And that also includes uh, an approach to staging over time. And then within that planning framework, we ask you to consider more detailed design characteristics, building typology, architecture, public realm, circulation, et cetera. We then ask you to annotate all of those illustrations um, that illustrate the massing and scale of both public and private well, as well as public space and how they'll be used and how they'll be staged over time. From a development schedule and financial perspective, we provide you with a pro forma and you fill in that. We don't ask you to build a whole pro forma, but you need to understand how that pro forma works, how the economic works. You'll get some base financial data to be used in that. So everyone's using equitable data 
and your the way you model your project and the scale of the project will then um, spit out its profitability or sustainable financial sustainability. The competition process, as I said, um, the teams are, are finding your students supported by a sponsorship, a sponsoring union. You need to complete your registration by the 16th of January. Um, we will check and have those verified by those sponsoring universities. That is a prerequisite of entry. Up to now, we've already had, I think, over 30, 35 um, active entries being prepared, which is really positive for us. We'll, we'll review and verify those entries in late January and confirm everyone um, by the 19th of February of their acceptance and eligibility. Our competition brief will be issued online and by email or online, but you'll be notified by email or entrance will be notified on the 23rd of February, which has a three week competition, a little bit over three weeks because we give you the two extra, the weekends either side of those weeks um, and a submission on the 18th of March. The jury is ULI leaders um, that are from across the country. We have great geographic diversity and skill diversity on the jury, and they will shortlist up to three finalists. May only be two, may only, there may be only one, um, but we look to shortlist up to three finalists to do a presentation on the 9th of April. The reason these dates are quite key here is because the competition fits around Chinese um, uh, New Year as well as Easter and making sure people's holiday times and the access to the, the jury um, is all enabled. But we also allow that jury to then make their decision on the 9th of April so that the winners um, who will be announced in May, we can notify the winners to have them at the conference at the ULI Asia Pacific Summit in Tokyo next year, which will be the 27th to the 30th of May. So that's the outline of the time frame. Once you get going, it's quite intense. Um, there's a bit of work in it, but we keep it quite short to make sure that the it's not onerous on your other studies and your work commitments. This is the team um, that won last year, a team from um, Japan. All finalists that are shortlisted receive a one-year ULI student membership, which is great. And the winning team has a fully paid all expenses, uh, flight accommodation and access to the summit in Tokyo. Um, so that team of three to five people will be um, in Tokyo next month. And they, at that summit, they'll have the opportunity to present their proposal on last year. Um, and they, with the inaugural competition, it was a great hit, the, um, the opportunity for these, these, this team to present. That's Ray Lawler, the CEO of um, Heinz in HPAC, um, who was very proudly engaged with this team and they were, uh, very prominent in their presentations and many members wanted to engage with them and that their success is reflected in opportunities for them this year. Um, our jury, as I said, is multi-regional. Our chairs are Chun Faong from um, Singapore and Peter Highland, who has spent a lot of time uh, working across Asia, but is now with Urbis in uh, Australia. So they're the two chairs and we have representatives from right across our Asia Pacific region and with a couple from the host um, city where the, where the site will be located. As I said before, we, um, we are in certain engage with a lot of universities. It's very high profile in, um, in America, Columbia University, Harvard, Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Stanford and Yale are all, are all leaders in this. It's a core part of their curriculum and we aspire to the same thing. Um, in a Asia Pac, we've had entrance from Beijing University, Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, uh, National University of Singapore, Ho Chi Minh, and Reseda Wasada University in, in um, Japan, which is where the, the winners came from last year. And then there's a, a number of the universities. Uh, London Business School is interesting for that cross-disciplinary perspective. Um, and they the diversity of that is what makes this appealing and hopefully the Asia Pacific regional diversity as well as the university diversity will continue to grow um, and take on this competition as part of their, their curriculum and interest. The key dates, um, as I said, we're in the registration period at the moment. We've had a number of these uh, webinars with uh, national councils, local councils, um, and we have this one. This will now be online if you do want to go back to it and hear it again. Um, we will close the registration on the 16th of January. 
We know that's for some people that's tight in the in the academic calendar, which is why we have a long registration period at the end of 2023. We'll notify teams on in February. The competition runs from the 23rd to the 18th of March. Finalists are announced the second or, or sometime up to the second. The, the, the presentation is the 9th of April. The winners announced um, privately on the 12th, but the formal announcement of that winning team is at our Asia Pack Summit on the 27th to 30th of May. Key engagements, uh, we've had the competition launch um, on the 21st of September. We've done a number of these webinars to date. We've got this one today as a webinar. We'll do one on the competition brief and during the competition, um, a week and a bit in, a week and a half into the competition, we'll have a QA and a for, for um, those that are committed and, and registered and, and participate in the competition to get clarification of anything that they may wish to ask of the competition organisers. Um, that's pretty much my presentation. Um, 23rd of February, in the March, and the winners announced in Tokyo in late May, the 27th to the 30th of May. So um, maybe I stop sharing any questions. Can you maybe you and I come on and we can uh, hear any questions from anyone online? I haven't seen anything in the chat at the moment. Hi, um, thanks, David, for the presentation. So far, we've received two questions. Uh, the first one from an anonymous attendee is uh, asking about students pursuing master's degree. Uh, will they be eligible for the competition? The answer is yes, you are eligible to join. The second one from Marcus Tomos, uh, is it possible to share the recording of the session? Yes, the recording will be shared with all attendees and will also be available on our website. I see we have a few more questions coming in. David, would you like to address them yourself? Um, are PhD students allowed to participate? Yes, they are. Um, so that's fine. The other one is in um, uh, China. Our only <laughs> fine yeah. undergraduates follow up. No. Um, we, we say undergraduates because it is quite a, a, a detail, but on... Um, Verification from the university, we will have, we prefer later year undergraduate students, but we're prepared to consider a broad, put your entry in and uh, and and and, we, and inquire and we're more than likely to accept at this stage. Um, is there any ideal composition team or some discipline that should be in the team? Really good question. Um, it is... Um, I would suggest planning, urban design, and planning is one thing, and finance is another, or the economic property economics, so that you've got a, a breadth of knowledge across both of those. Um, I would really, I, I'm a, I studied architecture originally, and I ended up in in property development, and you learn more from multidisciplinary um, exercise. It's a really good thing to have some diversity, but I would say urban design with architecture consideration doesn't have to just be architecture but urban design and architecture about how the volumes work is is strong and i think um property economics is strong as well um the site will be in uh china the site will be in tokyo confirmed no it's not yet the site will be announced at the start of the competition period Good recent graduates, yes. Recent grad, yeah. So we can we have that. Um, recent graduates are able to be part of the team, and also you can have a mixture of of students and recent graduates. You can also have, as I said, a professional advisor in the in the registration form. There's opportunity for that as well. Really good questions. Thank you.
when we run the competition, we will um, receive between the opening of the competition and the competition Q and A. Um, we'll have some questions. Those questions will generally be consolidated and shared with all the responses. Sorry, to those questions will be responded and shared and shared to all competitors. And we will also touch on them when we have our Q and A to all competitors during the competition on the fifth of March. I think also, Keneal, there's also online at the website, there's also the access to some interviews with last year's competitions and also last year's competition. Is that correct? Um, yes, we do have some material featuring the winning team and as well as the finalists available on the comp on the website, just so everyone can review them and see what, do ex what we expect in our submissions. Um, I see another question here about the fees. There, there is no registration fee. It's completely free to participate in the competition as long as you're eligible. Is there any restrictions of the area of study of undergraduate students? No. No, there's not. What happens if the registration has an observation? Do teams have the chance to modify the application to continue the process? Um, the registration of the team is to be completed by the 16th of January. Um, we discussed eligibility to the 19th of February. And so if something was um, needed a modification in that period, we would respond to that. Um, generally, we don't modify the teams. However, if there was some extraordinary reason, we'd certainly be more than willing to consider it on on um, on a on a um, issue by issue basis. Hopefully that answers your question, Marcos. We might amend, grab these Q and A, Keneal, and put them to we'll do a formal answer to the which is and, and add them to the webinar as a as a touch point at the end. Uh, okay, and um, this latest question, can students not in the final year participate? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, That's pretty good. Can help people that drop off? Really appreciate that. Some really good questions. We'll, as I said, we'll put them up on the website. And um, please, um, there's a, also an information competition email address there if you require other information that you can respond to and Keneal or myself can respond to you. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate your interest and look forward to your entries. Good afternoon.